morning. <laughs> oh dear. And welcome to day four. I think it's day four of the Great Norfolk Broads Adventure 8. And oh dear. Ah, I'm a bit woozy this morning. You're going to have to just, just deal with me at the moment. <laughs> Uh, I've got the kettle on. Um, I've actually been up for a wee while, um, but that Blinken Ann and Alan <laughs> I met last night. Oh, they introduced me to rum. Oh, uh, the only rum I've previously had was Malibu. Um, that's obviously a white rum, and I quite like Malibu actually. But I've not had it in years. Well, they were drinking the uh, proper, proper rum, and uh, it was like, uh... hold on a second, Kit. It's very important that I get, oh, that I get my coffee this morning. <laughs> uh, yes, they, they they introduced me to to rum last night, and I must admit, I took a wee sip, and I was like, okay, it's it's all right. It's alright, um, but I wasn't sure if I was going to like drink a lot of it, but the thing about rum is that the more you drink it, the more you like it, so the more you drink it, and it was a vicious circle, and it just sort of spiralled all the way down, <laughs> and oh god, I was fine sitting on the boat with them, you know, there was no problems at all sitting on the boat with them. And then I walked off the boat to come back here and I, I got very tipsy very quick. I, I'm assuming it was just the cold air that, that hit me, but it was like, oh my goodness. And oh boy, I got very tipsy very fast. And I'm feeling a wee bit sort of woozy this morning, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was a it was a great night though, fairly great night, you know. Um, but like I say, I'm just a wee bit sort of. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would actually make myself fry up because I've got that hamper from Barnes. So I've got tons that I could actually make up, um, but to tell you the truth, I'm just... <laughs> I can't even face food at the moment. <laughs> coffee! That's what I'm needing, lots of coffee. Uh, so yeah. Uh, um, so no fry-ups at the moment. Um, but... So yeah. Anyway, anyway. That's beside the point. It was a great night. It was a great night, and uh, um, I'm looking forward to uh, travelling south um, tomorrow with uh, today with them uh, to go across Braden. Um, Braden should still be open. It's it was it was one of those the the weather yesterday was supposed to ease off um, early evening, and it did for a while, and then. Um, when I was coming back to a boat, it pretty much came back on again. Um, and uh, by the time I got onto the boat and sort of organised and did my vlog, it really came down. I mean, at one point during the night, it woke me up. The rain was hitting the, the boat that that hard. Um, and it's still a wee bit blustery and wet and cold and damp. You probably hear. I've actually put the heating on. Um, because uh, it is a wee bit. I mean, it's not like, oh my god, I've got icicles forming from my nose. It's not that cold. <laughs> um, but it's it's definitely a wee bit chilly. It's chilly. And I know, I know what some of you are saying. You know, go and put some clothes on then, Russell. And I will. I'll go and put some clothes on momentarily. Just let me get my coffee first and wake up. Um, so, yeah. It's, uh, it's been one of those... Uh, days um, <coughs> days
days, mornings. I, I'm so totally not with it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, um, <coughs> it's not the best of starts to the day. It's it's still a bit rubbish, um, but it's it's going to be a good day. Um, I'm still planning uh, to get south. Um, and uh, like I say, the, the weather should ease off, um, the, the rain should ease off, the uh, wind should ease off. I don't know if, if it's going to get sunny or anything like that, but it's definitely going to be another day of um, camera through the window. Um, because it's just like bleh, you know. But yeah, um, other than that, other than the fact that um, I'm, I'm a bit woozy, I'm still needing lots of coffee. Other than the fact that I'm really needing to eat something, <laughs> but I so can't be bothered to <laughs> make it a fry up. Um, it's it, it, it's a good start to the day, actually. You know, and it, it's looking forward to it. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to end up today. Um, I've got a couple of ideas what I want to do. Primarily, I think what um, I'm going to do is I'm going to head south. Um, probably the next 45 or maybe about the next half hour or so um, uh, get myself ready, head south um, get across Braden, I'll probably go down to Redum um, purely that gives the engine time to warm up all the water and all the systems and everything like that you know um, and uh, then I can get myself a, a shower and get organised and changed and everything um, and then I don't know. Um, I suppose it really all depends on on exactly what what the weather does do um, later today. Uh, if it does ease off, if it gets a bit nicer, I might jump back. You know, top up my water tank, um, and then either head on elsewhere. You know, um, I do have a couple of ideas that I want to try. Um, and see some some new places, you know. Um, I've not really visited anywhere new yet, but I want to try um, and tr uh, try a, a couple of new places. So yeah, we we will wait and see. We'll wait and see. It's kind of all weather dependent um, at the moment, if I'm honest. Um, it's 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 a it's a hard enough slog in some respects to actually get south. Um, because there's just like nothing to see um, and it's not very picturesque it's an even harder slog when it's miserable weather dull, grey, damp you know because it, it just sort of gives that oppressive look you know so uh, by the time I get down to read them I might not just really want to go anywhere else you know, especially if the weather's still miserable but we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see um, not much in the way of pretty, pretty footage, basically, I don't, I don't think today, but, you know, that may change, that may change. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to babble too much, uh, I just wanted to uh, say good morning, uh, it's day four. Um, is it day four? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, aye, day four. <laughs> um, it's, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, um, we'll, we'll get the day started. So. As always though, I'll keep you updated, uh, so until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers!
little wee update for you. I am on my way and uh, <laughs> it would have helped if I'd actually remembered to start the GoPro before I left the morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me on my way. The, current, the time is currently about half past nine. The, the rain has eased off, the wind has calmed down, it's still wet, it's still wind, uh, breezy. Uh, my windows are all misted up and it's going to be an interesting journey down. But uh, I have Anne and Alan in Moonbeam, they are behind me and we are going to go down south together. Um, it should be an okay crossing, no problems whatsoever. Um, so yeah, that, that has the day officially started. Um, I'm feeling confident in this boat that I will get under the bridges. I'm feeling confident that I have got the passage times correctly. <laughs> this time. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're going to be getting to the south. Um, I'm kind of hoping that the weather does improve, even if it is slightly. Um, as the day goes on, uh, it's, it's not going to be as nice as it was on Sunday. Oh, on Sunday. Um, that was pretty much the summer holiday <laughs> on Sunday, you know. But, uh, oh well, it doesn't matter, you know. Um, it's good to be back um, and um, it's, uh, it's great to be travelling down the, the rivers. I have the, uh, the, the trusty coffee here. And uh, once that is done, um, thanks to Barnes Brinkcraft Extra Camper, I have a nice glass of um, apple juice as well. So I've got plenty um, around me ready for um, uh, drinking me hydrated. Well, I'm sick, hydrated, but let's just say I'm a little bit tipple if I can't afford it. And if I need to uh, dry out the floor a wee bit more or a wee bit peckish, once again, thanks to Barnes Extra Camper. I've got a nice big bag of Jacob's Peak crackers there to our Halloween munch on as I head down the river. So, looks like we're all sorted. Um, quite an easy leaving the, the bullet. I, I wish I'd remembered to turn the camera on, um, but uh, uh, it was actually quite easy leaving the mooring um, because I was on the very, very end of it um, and the wind was blowing me onto the bank. It was just a matter of taking my time with my ropes um, to undo them. Uh, the wind kept, the, um, kept me onto the bank and um, basically, I just basically reversed straight on out, you know, um, and uh, yeah. No problems with there, so it was nice and easy leaving the mooring. It would be nice if that was the same at Freedom when I get there, but we'll have to wait and see uh, what the wind and everything does. Because it's a, a bit of an awkward shaped bowl for that side, uh, which I should have actually um, prepared the roof for disembarking on that side in case I need to put the roof down for the sake of mooring up. Um, I'll worry about that down if we do but um, if I can get a mood on this side that would be excellent because I can just nip out the hatch here. You know? If I have to mood on that side, that might be an issue, but um, I'm kind of hoping that because we're going down, um, we're heading for, I should head for slag water, but I'm not heading for low water. Um, so I'm going to be fighting against the tide once I turn at the Yarmouth, but it should be that I can move on this side of the boat. So we shall wait and see. We shall wait and see how things go. But yeah, uh, so it's just a, a matter now of just um, kicking back, relaxing, and uh, just going with us with uh, the long slog. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those journeys that. Um, It's always good at the end of a journey, but it's not its not necessarily the best of journeys in, when it's the, the crappiest of weather. So, yeah. Um, not expecting to be blown away by sunny scenery and, and all that sort of stuff, but eh, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. In the meantime, Anne and Alan are keeping okay. They're just uh, putting it on very nicely behind me. So there's no problems there. Um, they will 
believe me standing on rain water. Um, this is not what you would call a speedy boat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if they decide to open up the taps, they are going to go for it. And uh, I will meet them at, uh, at Weedham uh, about half an hour later or something like that. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'm going to go for now. Try not to babble too much. It's not going to be the, the, the prettiest of footage, uh, I will admit, it's not the nicest of days. Um, but once again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I would rather be on the broads, in the rain, than sunning myself on an Ibethan beach drinking margaritas, you know, because there's just... wonderful. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, as always, I'll keep you updated uh, and uh, we'll see what, what happens with the day and where the day takes us. So until later, I shall speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers. Just a little wee update for you. <laughs> ah, um, you know how every boat has a nickel, you know, and some nickels are bigger than others. You, you never really get a truly horrendous one. Well, you do get truly horrendous boats, but most boats <coughs> are pretty okay, you know. And but even the best of them, even the newest of them, even the spankest, brandest no, never been in the water before, newest of them does have nickels. Um, that doesn't necessarily make it a bad boat, but it's something that sometimes you have to be aware of, you know? This boat has an annoying nickel. <laughs> and it's only annoying me because it's wet. Um, now, it's not rain and rain it's that um, um, you know that fine drizzle stuff that comes down you know it's it, it's it soaks you right through without actually being raining you know, you, you know the stuff you know that fine drizzle stuff well it's it's drizzling today okay now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad day. I mean, I've had the, the hatch open, you know, and it's actually not too cold outside, you know. I put the heating on this morning just to give the, the boat a, a wee bit of a blast and warm up and take the chill off it, but the heating's now off. Um, but the problem is, is that when you get drizzle, your front windscreen gets all wet and covered in raindrops. Of course it does, you know, I hate to state the obvious, duh. 
and most boats nowadays, not all of them, especially the older ones, but most boats nowadays have a windscreen wiper. This is good. This means that in the rain, you can activate a windscreen wiper and keep on going with clear visibility. This boat has a windscreen wiper, which I'm very grateful of today. The only problem is, I'm sitting here on the port side, right? I've got four windows in front of me. <laughs> I'm sitting here on the port side, looking out the first window on the left. But unfortunately, the windscreen wiper, for whatever reason, has been put in the middle of the boat. <laughs> Which means that if I activate the windscreen wiper, I can't stand, <laughs> I don't have clear visibility sitting here, you know? I've actually got to stand up in the middle of the boat, stretching out with my hand and, you know, steering like that. So, it's... Usually this wouldn't be a problem, but on what is going to be a, a bit of a slog, down, and a long slog at that, down across brain water, you know, uh, which is possibly going to be a bit breezy across brain water today, is not exactly maybe the, um, the um, best situation I want to be in. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's uh, why they did it, you know? Um, I'm sure there was a perfectly logical, reasonable purpose behind putting a windscreen wiper in the middle of the boat. And I would rather have it there than not have it at all, you know? But it's definitely a little bit annoying having a windscreen wiper in the centre of the boat when you are helming from the port left side. So. <laughs> That's definitely a niggle about this boat. <laughs> well, <coughs> anyway, other than that, other than windscreen issues aside, um, we're continuing down, no problems. Uh, I, I caught up with a, a boat, yeah, you might have seen, um, I was passing through Stokes Bay and I caught up with a, a, a boat in front. Um, and I don't know what was going on with him, maybe he was just distracted or something, you know? Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, he was going quite slow and he was all over the place, you know? He would hold the course for a wee bit and then he would swing over to the left and then swing over to the right and then swing back and I was just like, mm, okay. And the fact that he was going a bit slow as well, you know, I thought, well, either he's, he, he's not long taken over the boat and he doesn't, he's still need time to, you know, his first time out, he's still need to get used to it or, I don't know, maybe he's, he's, he's distracted or something, but, I don't know, but um, I found a, a clear forward stretch of river and passed him very quickly because I, I wasn't comfortable sitting behind him. I, I had visions of him suddenly doing a, a three-point turn in front of me, you know, and uh, crashing into me or something, you know, so just like, no, I won't pass him, so I passed him rather quickly. Um, maybe a wee bit too quickly. Not excessively, but maybe a wee bit too quickly, but then I'm, I'm back on down, you know. So yeah, um, so that's me back in front uh, of him and I'm quite happy. Um, thankfully, um, Anne and Alan, they got in front of him as well. Um, although for a moment I thought they were actually going to hit each other because he swerved over. But, um, uh, I've just passed Stracey Arms, so that was the last stop before Great Yarmouth, so we are now heading for Great Yarmouth. It's Great Yarmouth or bus now, you know. Um, one good thing I do like about this boat, by the way, okay, is it's it's a bit worse for wear, it's a bit worn, you've seen it, um, is it comes with a wee flag on the front. I like that. I think that's a great thing. I wish more boats had flags on front, you know? I mean, I, 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 it would have been great if, if they actually put a flag on a boat um, 
on all the high boats, you know, because you just don't know how useful that flag is to tell you what's going on with the wind, you know? Brilliant, you know, and it's such a simple thing, I mean, surely, you know, you would think that higher yards would, would realise the, the advantages of having a flag on, on a boat and actually make a point of putting flags on boats. Probably cost issues, you know, and who, who wants a flag on a boat on a boat, you know, but yeah, it's, it's really handy and I'm really liking the fact that I've got a flag on this boat, even if it is a wee bit past its best. <laughs> um, because it's, it's telling me very much what the wind is doing when it's, you know, at various points. Helps with moving and leaving moorings, you know, and uh, I think it will be a, a, a very helpful going across green to tell me exactly um, uh, if there's any crosswind and how strong the crosswind. You know? So yeah, loving the fact that it's got a, a, a flag, hating the fact that the windscreen wipers in the centre, um, and uh, still going down. Um, past Gracie Arm, the Great Yarmouth or Bust, hopefully um, rain water will still be open, it should be, um, it's not that bad weather. The water levels were a wee bit higher than expected, not surprised considering the heavy rain we had over the last 24 hours, but everything's going wonderful, you know. Um, you're not going to get much footage today, unfortunately, uh, definitely not. Um, I could take the footage, but it will just look very uh, horrible and grey, you know. So I will do a, I will do a wee bit, but um, not, not these uh, sweet little bit of thing. Oh, and go. So yeah, uh, I'll do the obligatory um, Great Yarmouth video um, and across the Raiden and then we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm still hoping it clears up a wee bit. It's supposed to clean up in the afternoon, so, so we'll see how that goes. So, that's the update so far. Everything's going lovely um, and uh, we're just continuing down south. So, um, as always, I'll keep you updated. So, uh, until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers! Yep, you can tell <laughs> it's the perfect crossing of Braden time. Yes, I'm just going to put you up, you're going to go into the wind, it's going to be very quick because it's that, still that drizzle stuff, but I want to show you something. Oh, if I can do this, oh sorry, right, turn it around. Oh, you probably can't actually see that on the camera. But there's currently four boats in front of me. There's me, and um, if I'd spin you around, that's uh, Alan at the back there. Uh, so yeah, there's about. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm all over the place. Wait a minute. Oh, see, that's what I get for not paying attention. What was that? I was saying about that. I don't know that last. It was all over the river. I'm going all over the river. Oh, it's quite peaceful. Well, let me bring you back inside. So yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, right, I've got it, I've got it, right, we're, we're, we're tracking through again, right, okay, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that, that you, you always uh, know when you're approaching um, the, the correct time for Braden crossing, um, because you, <laughs> you usually get a convoy of uh, boats all over the place, so, yes, um, <laughs> We've got a nice wee convoy going here, uh, so I've definitely got the time correct this time um, and uh, I'm getting, well, there's still got a wee bit to go yet, but the, the tide's already picking us up I'm already having to knock fewer and fewer revs off um, to keep a, a wee pace uh, We're all sort of bunching up a wee bit here as well, I don't know why, so hmm, this could get a wee bit interesting, you know But uh, still going well, still, still going well, um, weather's still a bit of rubbish though, but eh, ah, never mind. Um, loving my wee cruise, and I'm gonna go away and concentrate <laughs> because holding this camera and steering this boat um, out this. Um, in fact, actually, I'll, sh I'll show you what I was talking about the windscreen wiper. Here, hold on a second. Right, that's that's where I'm sitting. Okay, that's Tiberius keeping an eye on things all over the place. <laughs> and you can probably see, you know, you, I don't know if you can see that, it's not really coming up on camera, um, but uh, there's a lot of rain um, all over that windscreen, you know, and it's, um, I'm 
really need to pay close attention uh, all over the um, the windscreen. Uh, no wiper, uh, no wiper, but um, if I, uh, that's where my wiper is. And of course I've got the wee GoPro pointing out the, the clear part of the windscreen to get at least a little bit of footage as I go down the river. So yes, um, you can see, you can kind of see the problem if I'm sitting here but the clear sc screen's here, I'm having to stand in the middle of the boat and uh, saw away the wheels, <laughs> which is maybe not the most comfortable and um, it's not exactly the thing I should be doing um, while I'm trying to film and um, yeah, I should just put this camera back on a tripod and stop being an idiot. Yeah, definitely. But, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, uh, that's what I'm having to put up with at the moment. Uh, like I say, it's any other time, um, it wouldn't be an issue. Um, even when I was up in the Northern Broads, it wasn't much of an issue. Um, but I think because I'm heading south and there are some certain navigation issues that you have to be aware of, especially in the lower view where you start getting the marker posts and the, the shallow banks um, on either side. Still on the view, approaching Great Yarmouth. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be it's, it's going to be interesting. So, right, yeah, um, I'm going to go now. I need to concentrate um, and keep an eye on things. Um, I shouldn't be holding the camera and steering this boat because. Uh, it's not not in this position, it's not the easiest thing to do and I, I really need to sort of keep my wits about me. Uh, so I'll go there now, stick it back on the tripod and um, yeah, I shall uh, keep you updated on the day's events. <laughs> Only I could make a, a, a rubbish southward passage, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, right, okay. Uh, I'll keep you updated uh, and uh, I'll speak to you soon, okay? So until later, bye for now. Cheers!
just a little wee update for you. <laughs> I am on Brayton Water. Oh yeah. Um, came down the river view there, got under the bridges, no problems. I was like 10 foot cleared in, so I just ended up, you know, so I got under, um, Moonbeam got under, who's been following me down. Um, I've been following a few craft down as well, and uh, yeah, no problems. Um, it's, it's, it's a wee bit overcast, but um, the visibility is not 100%, but it's, it's still good, it's still good. The, that drizzle is easing off slightly, so I'm quite glad about that. Seemed to be some sort of police incident down at Great Yarmouth though. Um, there was uh, a couple of police boats uh, running around with their lights on. Uh, they seem to have tied up to uh, uh, another boat. I don't know if it broke its moorings or, or what. There was a police uh, yacht um, launch running around which looked like they had about three or four kids on it. So I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they were related to the, the boat that have tied up. So some sort of incident is going on. I, I, I will maybe have a wee look, see if I can um, figure out what was going on, um, find out what was going on, but uh, yeah, I thought they were actually, for a, for a moment I thought they were going to close brain water, I couldn't see why they'd close it, the wind's kind of really calmed down now, it's almost non distant the drizzle's calmed down, it's just that really dull heavy overcast that's hanging over the water, but uh, yeah, uh, but they didn't, they didn't, it was that something to do with that boat that I was, like I say, um, you might have seen uh, the stuff on the, the video if I, sh if I showed the, the passage um, under the bridges. So I'm just going along brain water, um, flat out, which is not very fast at all. <laughs> not in this boat. This is, like I said, this is a slow boat, you know, but um, yeah. But it doesn't matter, you know. Um, I'm probably punching against the last of the outgoing tide. Um, but it's not a problem. Um, and it's uh, not actually that rough. There's been a few waves around the water, but it's um, quite a pleasant crossing all in all. So yeah, so crossing Brain Water, and then once we get to the fork, where it splits into the, the, the year, the year and the Waverley, we will take the, the right fork and go down the year uh, to Reedham. Um, I'm still thinking I'll, I will stop at Reedham um, for at least a shower of water and stretch the legs, go to the toilet, you know, that sort of thing. So, one thing that uh, is slightly annoying about going solo is that. Um, can't take a toilet break, <laughs> you know, and I maybe drank just a little bit too much coffee this morning, so I was like, oh, <laughs> so yeah, hopefully I can get in a wee dump and uh, stretch my legs and top of the water, have a shower and change and all that sort of stuff, so yeah, that'll be good. In the meantime, crossing Braden water and uh, all is going well, uh, so as always, I'll keep you updated and uh, We'll see what adventures lie store ahead for us later in the day. Okay, so until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers!
update. Jeez. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I've come to a decision, right? See the problem with coming south, right? It's not leaving Acre. It's not leaving Tracy Arms. It's not even the stretch of the River Pure from Tracy Arms all the way down to Great Yarmouth. And it's not the crossing of uh, along Brain Water. No. That's not the worst thing about the crossing into South. You want to know what the worst thing is? Okay. It's after you've crossed Brain Water. Um, obviously I'm heading towards Freedom, so, so when I got to the junction I turned right down the river here. I suspect it might be the same if I continued down the wood way with the the rain the rain. I can't even talk. That's how bad it is, I can't even talk. I suspect it might be the same issue if I continue straight on down the river Waverley. Um because what happened is that you leave Acom, okay, and it's all twisted right there, you know, like, but you're, you're approaching you're the Great Yarmouth and you know that's your destination and you get excited about the crossing and all that. You get under the bridges and there's a wee bit of excitement there, you know, oh, oh we get under, oh, we get under, you cruise on under, you know, the very course is like, oh. Then you turn right to the yellow post, onto Brain Water, and Brain Water has no speed limits. So you open up that throttle, you know, and you do a wee sort of Miami Vice along there, you know, woohoo, here we go, let's see what we're going to do here, you know. You don't do that on this board, unfortunately, but you, you get the point, you know, you, you open up the tabs, yeah, and you have some fun on Brain Water, you know. Um, if there's high power, if there's fast boats coming towards you, or if the, the, it's a bit choppy, you know, you get a bit of wave action and you're like, oh, here we go, you know, bounce and bounce and splash, splash, and bang, bang. But that's a lot of fun. Then you get to the end of the water. Like I said, I turned right down the river here. Now, I'm only going to read up, okay, and it's only like a short stretch of river, right, from Green water down to me down. But my god, it just goes on and on and on and on and there's nothing around you to break up the monotony. It's just reeds and mud and water and reeds and mud. <laughs> it just never stops. And you 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 turn a corner and you think Oh, is this me approaching the junction where I turn right up to, um, you know, you, you get to the bottom of the street stretch, you turn right up the, the air towards Redum or left along the new car, and that takes you down to the River Waverley from that section. And every corner you turn, is this the junction? No, it's not. You keep on going. You turn another corner, is this the junction round here? No, it's not. Okay. You turn a corner, you think, this is this has got to be. I'm, I'm seeing the outline of buildings, or or civilization, or or, or, or sailing masts. You know, this has got to be made up. You turn the corner, and it's like no, it isn't. It's like oh, you know, and it just never stops. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm in some sort of twilight zone of dull greyness, you know, and an empty river, and it's just like grey and grey and grey and grey, and it just doesn't stop. <laughs> oh, I will get, I will get to read them eventually. I mean, I think I've been here about half an hour now on this river. I did, every, every time I come down this one wee stretch, you know, it doesn't even look that big on the map. But, um, Every time I get on this stretch, it's like, oh, once you cross Brayden, it's not that far to read up. You know, it bloody is, by the way. <laughs> you know? Ah, oh, it just never... And I think that's the worst part about trying to travel south, is that it's not the, 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 the monotony before Brayden, you know, with very little to see. It's not crossing Brayden. Where they're very little to see. It's that stretch of river just past Braden. 
where you're trying to get to where you know your destination, you know, and it just doesn't stop. <laughs> anyway, so I just thought I'd share that, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the update. I am on this never-ending, winding, grey, monotonous river. I'm actually, I think I'm actually punching again to tight still, actually, because I'm, I'm, uh, like I pointed out, this is not a fast boat. Uh, I will explain why later, um, but I'm, I'm pretty much a uh, full belt and I'm only doing about five and a half miles an hour. The exact same speed I was doing when I was crossing night, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, this is not a fast boat, which probably is making this way section even longer. That's uh, enough rambling for one bit. I just thought I'd update, update you with. I'm seeing sailing masts in the distance, you know. Could this be the approaching window? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so, I will go for now uh, and I will keep you updated uh, on the day's events. Um, so, yeah, until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers!
Okay, just a quick wee update in the drizzle. <laughs> I'm at Weedham, finally got down that river. Finally I got in. Um, I did it a wee bit wrong, the tide, the, there is still a slight outgoing tide, it's not very powerful. Um, so I was able to come in on the wrong side. Um, um, usually when you, you want to moor it against the tide, but obviously with a side hatch it's easier for me to step off the port side of the boat, that's the left. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, it was a, a wee bit of a, a, a tricky mooring, it had to be quite quick. Thankfully though, it's just the last of the outgoing tide, um, so it's, uh, it wasn't too powerful and I was able to do it. Um, I don't quite know how I would have dealt with it if it had been um, full flow. But uh, yes, that's me at Weedham, outside the, uh, the Lord Nelson. Um, as Dave would say, um, or Dave Whitworth, um, I, I'm actually considering uh, going to check the water levels now, actually, after that crossing. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, I don't know, I don't I need a shower, I need to get organised, uh, and I need to top up my, my water tanks. So uh, I might do all that and then kind of uh, figure out what I'm going to do later. Um, I, I, I did have a thought, actually, is that I've obviously spent the night here at Weedham, um, but there is a place just a little bit further up the river called the Reedham Ferry, and it's by the chain ferry up there. Um, I've never actually been there, I've never spent the night there. It's supposed to be actually quite good. So I'm thinking once I've uh, topped up my water and showered and everything like that, I'm thinking I might cast off and actually go up and take a wee look and maybe uh, go up to the Reedham Ferry and spend the night there at Weedham Ferry. Um, but I don't know. Um, that's an idea I had. I don't make plans, as you know. So we'll see what actually happens um, as the day progresses. Uh, in the meantime, going to get myself organised, get another couple on the go, and uh, see uh, how the day goes. So, uh, uh, as always, I'll keep you updated. So, until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers! Okay, just a little wee update for you. <coughs> What a palaver that was. <laughs> oh, right. Um, I am moored here, okay, outside the Lord Nelson. Okay. Now, I will come back to that sign in a moment, right? Because I didn't know this. And that sign took me a bit by surprise. Anyway, if you moor at this particular point, outside the Lord Nelson, possibly outside this very sign here, <laughs> you have a water point up there. You also have just down there the ranger's hut and on the other side of it is a water point. The only problem is, is that if you move at this particular spot, <laughs> it is the one spot in the whole of the quay where neither hose will reach your boat. So I stopped for water and I can't get it. <laughs> ah, typical, typical. Anyway, not to worry, not to worry. <clears throat> um, I'm ca oh, and um, I've kind of decided, I think, what I'm actually going to do here, because it's getting on a wee bit, you know, it's like knocking on three o'clock at the moment. Um, and um, I've kind of decided I'm just going to stay in Weedham. I'm not going to move up to the, the, the Weedham Ferry um, further up the, the road. Um, I was going to uh, go up there, but I'm kind of thinking that um, it's probably going to be a bit busy up there um, by now. Um, I might get moored, I might not, um, but uh, I think I'll just stay here for the night. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice enough place. Um, so, yeah, um, the, the weather is a bit bleh, you know, um, and I'm still needing to get myself organised and what have you. Um, but uh, that meant that I had to um, readjust my ropes because I, I only set it up for um, basically just uh, staying for an hour or so, get myself ready and then away again. Um, so what I've had to do is basically, I'll spin you around and show you. Excuse the wind on the microphone. Once again, it's all this sort of spring line stuff that I'm uh, doing um, at the moment. So I've got the uh, starboard rope 
down there I've got the port rope around that post um, it's a bit slack at the moment but when the tide turns the boat will move this way that should tighten up and stop it from going too far forward I might actually tighten that up because that's actually looking a bit too slack if I'm honest but I'm also being very very wary of just how much the, the tide rises and falls um, at the back though I've, I've had a problem what I wanted to do ideally is take this stern rope here and tie it around this post and that would have meant that I would have taken this rope and tied around there however that rope is too short it will go around the post but I can't tie it off there's just no way it's just way way too short and no matter how I did it um, it just wasn't working um, and if it's not going to fit around that post it definitely won't fit around that post so yeah I can't even bring it over wrap it around and then tie it on a cleat uh, so yeah, I've, I've got that one spring line on, so hopefully that will prevent the, the boat from moving too much. Um, so yeah, that's all set up. Now, back to this little sign here. Now, I was under the impression, okay, that uh, this whole area was Redham Yacht Station, if you like. Um, it was all the free moorings and no problems. Turns out that's not actually correct, okay? And once again, um, I'm going to spin... No, I'll, in fact, I don't know if you can see, just behind me, just behind that freedom boat, there's a ladder just there. From that ladder there, all the way to the ladder by the um, ranger station, actually belongs to the Nelson pub. Okay, now I didn't know this, right? So that's is essentially sp sp space for four boats can mo moor here, but these moorings actually belong to the pub, and it's the moorings on the other side that are free. Um, however, um, there is no charge um, for mooring here, and basically, as long as you go into the Lord Nelson, um, have a drink bite to eat or whatever um, you can moor here no problem so you're still it's still a free mooring on these um, on these four spaces as long as you have um, a little something in the Lord Nelson I didn't know that you know but obviously that's the situation uh, so that means Dave Whitworth <laughs> I'm gonna be going into the Lord Nelson momentarily to check out uh, check the water levels as he puts it so I will be doing that um, probably just directly actually um, and uh, yeah um, so yeah that's that's basically where I'm gonna spend I'm gonna uh, stay, stay the night here spend the night here I think uh, go and check the water levels in the Lord Nelson and then we're fine we're fine don't need to worry about it it should be a good enough mooring and then well no idea. Well, I've got an idea. I've got an idea where I'm going tomorrow, but whether that happens or not now, I don't know. Um, but I will be go. One thing I want to do is I want to go down the Waveney. You know, there's lots and lots up the year, and I've been to lots and lots, and there's still more that I've, um, I want to experience up there. Um, but uh, tomorrow, I think Waveney. Let's try a wee bit down the Waveney. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So that's the update so far, uh, I don't know where I'm eating, um, I will take a look at the menu in the Lord Nelson uh, and see what is available and what the food is there. I, I ate there last year and it was actually alright, quite enjoyed it, um, but there is a, a cheeky wee pub just down, further down the quay so I might try that. So that's the update so far, if anything else happens I will keep you informed but uh, until later I'll speak to you soon, so until then. Bye for now. Cheers! Sometimes my genius amazes even myself. <laughs> I was I was in the boat, I just basically just had a, had a wee wash, got myself organised and I'm sitting there in the saloon and I'm having a think to myself, okay, um, about the spring line business, right? Because obviously 
the, the front reaches this post here, but the back won't won't work as a spring. Okay, and I'm trying to figure it out. What can I do? Okay, and I think I've sorted it out. Okay, I'll show you what I've done. Okay, this is what I've done. Now I pointed out that that one is on that post, and that one went to that post, but the rope from there can't tie around the back post to allow me to bring this rope onto this post. So what I've done is that I've taken this rope, I've taken it down to this post like it was, but I've untied it, okay? And basically what I've done is, <coughs> is that I've put it around the post once and then taken that rope, ran the rope all the way down to the back cleat and it wouldn't tie on the back cleat, but the wee knot, I've just moved the boat forward a wee bit, like that, and then I've just hooked it in there, like that. The tie takes it and tightens it up, okay? Not ideal, ideally I wanted to have wrapped it around and tied it, but that is now on the cleat. So, theoretically then, if I've done this correctly, excuse the mess of the boat, it's wet so and muddy so the boat's getting very very dirty but if I've done this correctly that means that the boat has now got a spring line from the bow and the stern so that when the tide moves this way and up this, those ropes will take the strain but when the tide changes and moves this way that rope will take the strain and this rope will not prevent the boat from going that way or no <laughs> Let me try and explain this, okay, right. This is new to me, okay, and I'm learning. This is part of the learning experience, okay. I, th I think I'm getting into sort of advanced boating techniques here for the broth, okay. So bear with me if I get it wrong. Don't criticise me if I get it wrong. But this is my thinking, right. The tide is coming in. It's pushing the boat that way. So that rope is stopping the boat from going this way. That's taking the strain just now. There's a bit of slack, so it should be okay for going up. This, uh, this rope, part of the rope here from here to there will take the strain and the boat won't move that way too much, but it'll hold it so that as it rises, there's plenty slack in it or falls. When the tide turns later, that rope will take the strain to prevent the boat from going too far this way, whereas that part of the rope tied around this will take the strain as well, holding the boat in place. So the boat should stay where it is, not really move back and forth a wee bit, and there should be enough slack between all the ropes and the various anchoring points to allow it to rise and fall as it does down here at Reedham, because it does rise and fall quite a bit. I'm kind of hoping that is correct. Don't criticise me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that that is the way to secure a spring line from the bow and the stern if you can't get your stern both stern ropes fixed up just bring a rope that's long tie it around the post and then attach it to or tie it to the back cleat therefore you've still got a spring line on your bow and your stern using one rope that's probably completely wrong if it is Please feel free to tell me that's wrong, but don't criticise me and tell me I'm an idiot, okay? I'm, I'm learning here, okay? Right? But I'm pretty sure that that will work, and if it does, my genius knows no bounds. <laughs> okay, so that's the latest update, okay? I've, I've had a moment of, of, of clarity, and I think I've sorted out my ropes with a, a spring line using one rope. Right, that's all for now. I'll keep you updated. So until later, bye for now. Cheers!
Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had my dinner about an hour ago and I'm standing on the road in the middle of traffic. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, where is the boat? Where is the boat? I'm going back to the boat. <laughs> I'm I'm a little bit tipsy by the way and it's feeling rather good <laughs> Good evening, and how are we doing this evening, YouTube? Right, okay, I'm not gonna lie, right, I'm sorry, but this is no dark side, and I'm sorry about that, okay. <laughs> I came out of the pub, right, I'm still at reading by the way, you know, <laughs> um, I came out of the pub, um, actually no, let me start from the start. Okay, and the only thing to start from the start is to go and do two things. One is have a beer and the other is to make a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, this is going to be bad. Hold on, I did this the other night there as well, didn't I? And I bet you all you see just now is just nothing but blackness. Huh? Nothing but blackness as I go and bloody open this. Oh dear. I know it's terrible. This is complete unprofessionalism, you know. But hey, let's face it, if you wanted professionalism, you wouldn't be watching my bloody mug drinking a beer. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, right. What has been going on since I last spoke to you? Well, uh, I'm no tipsy, okay, so I'm no I probably put this da do 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 so I probably put this as a dark side but I'm afraid it's not a dark side. Um because I've kind of sobered up. I know, I know, I know. Me sober? Really? Sober? Me? You know? On a boat, you know? Scandalous, terrible, you know? Get that man a drink, you know? Okay, okay, well if if you insist, okay, I'll have <laughs> no, um, let me explain. Um, I uh, after what I was saying about the uh, the the moorings here um, being private and be be belonging to the Lord Nelson, um, I decided it would be only fair um, that um, and Dave Whitworth. Um, if you've never seen Dave Whitworth videos, by the way, um, I, 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 I highly recommend you check them out, okay? Dave, Dave Whitworth is actually, um... <laughs> is his humour dry? Or, you know, he's got a very, um, yeah, I mean, he, he, he's... I like Dave Whitworth, you know? Um, he, 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 he's on this boat called Silver Cloud, you know, and he, he, I, don't, I don't know if you'd call it a dry humour uh, or a wet humour, you know, for that matter, because he does like his beer, you know, much like myself, you know, <laughs> but he's, uh, he, he, he's got a good taste in music, you know, he's got, uh, he, he does this uh, wonderful river footage, you know, to to his music, you know. Um, he he puts wee slants on um, his music as well, you know. We sort of themes to them, you know. Um, and uh, uh, I I really like them, and I I recommend you you check out Dave Whitworth's videos on on YouTube. Um, but um, one of the things that he does like to do is he likes to check the water levels, you know. So, considering I was on the Lord Nelson's private moorings, I only thought it fair to uh, check the water levels, you know. <laughs> so, so, in the finest tradition of Dave Whitworth, I uh, knocked on the, the door of Moonbeam 
and invited Alan out to the Lord Nelson to pay for the, nooring, the, the moorings by checking the water levels. And I must say, we had a pint of Swallowtail and it was very bloody nice that, that by the way, that Swallowtail beer, really so drinkable. Oh, so, so drinkable. But, um, and I am propping myself up by the way, you know, see, see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, after I checked the water levels with Alan, he, he went back to, to his boat. Um, and uh, then we decided, uh, well I decided, I should say, to go down to the ship inn. You know, because I've never been to a ship. You know, and they, they, there's two places in Weedham. There is the Lord Nelson, which is right smack bang in the middle of it. You cannot miss the Lord Nelson, you know, um, pub. And it's, it's nice. I ate there last year and it, it's nice. It's welcoming. It was it was good, you know, and it's, it's a pretty good decor. Well, interesting decor, I should say. And then there's the ship in, which is right at the other end, um, down by the bridge. Um, and that, that's a bit more of a traditional um, English pub, you know. In fact, they did this really cool thing um, above the pub, um, uh, the actual behind the bar on the roof. They've got like these these wee, wee miniature bottles, okay, right? And there's like 3,000 of them dangling on the roof above the bar. You know, and they've got lights and everything like that, and they, they, they all sort of light up and twinkle and sparkle, and it's like, wow, that's cool. You know, I mean, I wouldn't have liked to have been the person that that, that had to drink three thousand bottles of these wee, wee miniatures just so they could put the bug, the buggers up there, but <laughs> that was it was pretty cool. You know, but um, yeah, I went to the ship in. Um, and I must admit, I mean, the the minute I walked into it, I, I just liked it, you know. No, you just walk into a place and you just like it, you know. Well, I walked in there and I just liked it, you know. Um, got myself another pint of swallowtail, actually. They, they, they did swallowtail there. Um, I think it's from the Humpty Dumpty Brewery. You know, it's a pale ale, you know. It's not very strong, you know. But um, it, it's it's too drinkable, so you you drink it a bit too quickly. <laughs> and it was really good, totally good. Um, and then I, 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 I sat there for a while because I was too early. They only do uh, dinners between like six and nine, you know. So um, I got there a bit too early. So I had a pint, a swallowtail, and waited for the kitchen to open. Um, and then I did um, I ordered food. And uh, what did I have? I had battered mushrooms, beer, beer battered mushrooms on a bed of salad with garlic and chai dip. That doesn't sound like, I mean that just sounds like well it's just garlic mushrooms isn't it? Breaded garlic mushrooms or whatever, you know? But it really wasn't, you know? Um, it was actually beer battered mushrooms, you know? Um, Okay, it was maybe a wee bit of sort of, it, it is what it says on the tin sort of thing, but the reality was very different um, from uh, what it said on the menu, you know. I mean, that was nice. I mean, that was really nice, you know. Um, it's not often you actually come across battered mushrooms, but, um, you know, because usually they're those breaded, garlic mushrooms and what have you but yeah I mean it was just it, it was just it was different it was really nice you know and you got a lot of them you know it wasn't just like a two or three or four or, four or whatever you know you actually got a lot of them on a plate it was quite a big starter and it was really really nice I thoroughly enjoyed it um, the menu at the ship is nothing fancy, okay? So if, if, if you want to go there looking for um, 
the lion or the white horse esque sort of fancy food. Or, well, maybe not fancy food, but more sort of gourmet ish food. You know? Um, no, you're not going to find that at the, the ship in. It's very traditional, sort of basic um, pub food. I mean, uh, it's not a big menu, you know, but and it's uh, quite a basic choice, you know, but they do cater. You know, they cater for adults, kids, vegetarians, you know. Um, but um, what I found was that it, it's, it's not so much the size of the menu, it's more how it was cooked, you know, that really made it stand out. I mean, after those beer battered mushrooms, which I really enjoyed, um, I had um, another pint of swallowtail <laughs> and uh, a burger. Now, okay, yeah, I mean, it wasn't very, I mean, like I say, it wasn't very imaginative or anything like that, but the, the difference was, was that the burger wasn't some sort of processed frozen Aberdeen Angus bloody thing that you take out of freezer and shove in an oven or a microwave or something like that before sticking it on a bun, you know. This was actual proper mince, um, pressed and rolled and actually cooked for the burger, you know. And then you had a, a big dish of side salad um, chips. Um, which I think might have been homemade because it still has skins on them. Um, I could be wrong, because I, I know sometimes I'm not going to go into the chip thing, you know. But my impression is that they were at least, they made an effort, you know, to do something a wee bit different with the chips, you know. Um, and then a little homemade coleslaw, which was homemade coleslaw, because you can just tell the difference right off the bat, you know. Uh, and a wee touch salad, uh, salad garnish. And I must admit, it was it was good. It was enjoyable. Like I say, the the ship in it was it was nothing fancy, you know. It, it, it was it, it was a basic menu, properly done, you know. And I think that's what sets it apart, you know. Um, it wasn't trying to be anything special. It wasn't trying to be anything fancy, you know. It was just basic pub grub with a basic menu but properly made and home homemade you know so I really enjoyed it and it didn't actually cost that much you know I really really enjoyed it and I would actually recommend the ship in I'm not gonna say what, what one's better the Nelson or the ship each have their own advantages and disadvantages um, but yeah, I would definitely say that I would. Oh goodness! Oh, here we go! Oh, where the hell that come from? Um, I would definitely go back to the ship and uh, read them, definitely, because that was really, really good. Um, and then after another pint of swallowtail, I was um, heading back home to the boat. Um, and just as I got to the boat, um, Alan was—he'd um, been out with the dog. Um, and he was putting the dog back on and he came across and he invited me over for a, a little nightcap and um, I didn't want to intrude too much on him because um, I, I was over there last night you know and it was like um, 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 I, I was over there last night and uh, it's it was sheer coincidence. I mean, I wasn't supposed to be spending the night here. I was going to go up to Reedham Ferry, you know. Um, and it was actually sheer coincidence that um, we are actually both going to the Waveney tomorrow. Um, I have plans. I have a reason why I want to go to the Waveney um, tomorrow, um, which I can't reveal at the moment. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's for a reason that I'll, I need to investigate something um, for my next adventure. Um, so I, and I was, one of the reasons I wanted to come down south is I wanted to go to the Reedham Ferry and the Waveney River Centre. 
um, and it turns out that I didn't go to the Weedham Ferry, I went to the ship um, at Weedham instead, but I'm still going to go to uh, Waveney. Um, and of course, um, Anne and Alan, who I met at ACOL for the first time, they were coming to Weedham, which I've kind of stopped that as well. <laughs> they're going to Waveney tomorrow, and then they're going to Lorden, and then back north. So uh, yeah, it's just sheer coincidence that the pair of us are going to end up down at um, the Waveney tomorrow. So um, yeah, um, what what was the whole point of it? Oh, that reminds me. I don't know if I actually mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, just in case I forget, right? Um, I think I mentioned earlier, but I, I might not have. Okay, in the whole sort of um, getting things sorted. Um, uh, I met up with um, uh, 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 a very nice gentleman and his son. He uh, was um, at Weedham. I was just tying up and uh, they both came out. They were fans of the YouTube channel. Said hi, you know, I think I've got a picture of them uh, holding with Tiberius. Um, they were on the Freedom Boat. Now, unfortunately, I'm sorry, you know what I'm like with names, you know, I'm horrendous with names, um, I've got a picture of you, I'm sure I've got a picture of you with Tiberius, you were on a freedom boat, you're moored directly in front of me, I'm looking at your boat right now, um, and I just wanted to say it was great to um, meet you earlier today, you know, um, and uh, thanks for coming up to say hi, so uh, yes, um, and uh, <laughs> I pity your wife, you know, who, who, who subjects you to my YouTube rambling so much. <laughs> oh, I'm so getting the husband in trouble, by the way. <laughs> I, I, Mrs. You wanna, you wanna hear what he was saying to me about you out there on the key head? <laughs> No, he, he was saying nothing. <laughs> Honestly, seriously, that that was just a joke. Um, uh, he he was just saying that the the, the wife was a, a fan of the YouTube channel and they all watched um, it as a family and it, it was good. Uh, I had a good wee blather with them and it was good. It was good to meet them all. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. I'm sorry I didn't recall the the name of the boat offhand. You are the freedom boat in front and just say great to meet you today. You know, and I'm sure I've got a photo of you on <laughs> the, um, the, the, um, that I took earlier of you and Ted BDS. So yeah, um, it, it's been a good night. Uh, I mean, like I say, uh, I, I, I came back to the boat after the ship. Um, Alan was just sort of coming back to the boat as well after being out. Yeah, uh, he invited me in for a wee night, nightcap. I was like, oh, I don't really know him, you know. Saw you last night, don't want to impose on myself upon you, you know. Um, maybe I should just go back and uh, go back onto the boat, you know. Get a wee nightcap myself. And then he said, well, if you, if a nightcap won't do it, do you want to come and help me check the water levels again? I was like, okay, I'll come and help you, you know. Experienced boater, I know, you know, what can I do? <laughs> all I can, all I can do is whenever I... Uh, whenever a fellow boater needs, needs help checking the water levels, you know, <laughs> I cannot refuse. <laughs> so yeah, so I I, I went back and uh, I helped him check the water levels. Him and Anne, um, uh, and uh, all the water levels are fine by the way. After a, a few hours of um, um, copious intense investigation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, and then it was just back here, you know, so it's been, it's been another good day, actually, apart from that long slog from Braden down here, that just never seemed to end, you know, maybe, maybe it was the weather, maybe it was the river, or maybe it was the fact that I was really desperate on the toilet at the time, <laughs> I, I don't know, it was, Maybe it was all three, you know, but that was one hell of a long slog coming down that last section or whatever, you know, but yeah. Anyway, I'm back in the boat, I've got the heat and I'll just take the chill off there, it's not cold, you know, but I'm just taking uh, the chill off the boat uh, before I get ready. Uh, so yeah, um, 
So yeah, it's, it's not really a dark side, it's just more of an update. I'd probably put it on as a dark side, but because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm soberish, you know, but not soberish, if that makes any sort of sense, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the end of day four. This Monday or Tuesday? This is Tuesday. Yeah. Day four. <laughs> so, that's the end of day four of the Great Norfolk Broads Adventure 8. Um, I am going to um, finish that beer, make a coffee, and pass out. Um, if you have been watching, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found a wee bit of it informative as well. Especially with like spring lines and, and moving up and all that, you know. Um, that idea that I had about the spring line is, actually seems to be working very well. So, yeah, it's... Uh, and I'm kind of hoping that the weather's going to be a lot nicer tomorrow. Um, there is no wind at all. The river is practically rippleless calm, there's no rain, there's no wind, so I'm kind of hoping it'll be a nice day tomorrow, you know, maybe not sunny, but at least a nice day, you know, but we'll see. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go away, get myself organised. If you have been watching, thank you very much, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I've had a good, I've actually had a good day, I have, you know, it's, it's been great. And, oh, oh, that reminds me, by the way. By the way, that reminds me, before I go any further, okay, talking about the day. <laughs> Turns out, okay, that when I was coming down the River Bure, right, there was a monocle in front of me. I think it was monocle two. Um, and uh, I, I, I we kind of left Akil about the same time and we went all the way down the Bure and then all the way um, across Braden Water and down past Reedham and all I passed him on Braden Water um, it turns out, guess what, he's a fan of the YouTube channel too <laughs> everybody's a pal this week you know, it's brilliant uh, and he actually took a, 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 a photo of um, me Royal Stuart passing him and I believe he also took a photo of um, me and Anne and Alan on Moonbeam as well on Braden Water. So, yes, um, Lee, Lee Robinson. I remember that because you sent me a Facebook request, friend request, you know, after you, uh, uh, well, after I found out who you were. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, welcome to the madhouse, Lee. <laughs> Don't blame me if your sanity goes all to pop for being on my personal, personal Facebook page, because some shit goes go up there sometimes, believe me. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, um, it was uh, good to have you on board. Um, thanks for the photos. Um, they were actually really, really good. Uh, I really like the one you took of uh, Royal Stewart as, you, uh, as I was passing you. Um, and uh, I'm sorry for some of the weird, at times, manoeuvres that uh, I might have some uh, occasionally pulled in front of you. Um, but uh, it's not always easy, you know, so helming and YouTubing at the same time, you know, so. I mean, it's nothing dangerous, don't worry people, it's nothing dangerous. Just sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll go this way and then you that sort of thing, you know, um, but, um, yeah, uh, so yeah, Lee Robinson, um, thanks for the photos, welcome to the, uh, madhouse, uh, of my personal Facebook page. Okay, I've only had this last final wee bit, because the minute I said cheers, the camera seemed to cut out, so, did I actually get to say cheers, or did it cut out when I say, good night, thanks for watching, join me tomorrow. I'll see you soon. Cheers! No, so, yeah. I'm adding this bit in just in case that I, I, I didn't quite make it to the cheers! <laughs> uh, I need a coffee. I badly need a coffee. I need my bed as well. <laughs> if you have been watching, thank you very much. Um, 
this is the end of day four of the Great Norfolk Broad Adventure 8. Join me tomorrow for day five. Um, and we'll see exactly what happens tomorrow. You know, we've got a de we've got a destination in mind, but do I end up there or will I go elsewhere? You know, I don't know. We'll wait and see. But join me tomorrow and find out. So until tomorrow, I'll update you in the morning on how the head is. Until then, bye for now. Cheers. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning folks. Cheers for now. Good night. Bye.